I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? So welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, commentaries, topics, reactions, re-reviews, reviews, randomness, out of the blueness, pretty much anything, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And you know what? I got something in my nose. Oh, it's just Space Jam, New Legacy. Now, let me start off and say, I like the original Space Jam. Now, let's be honest. Am I going to sit here and say that Space Jam is a 5 out of 5 star masterpiece of storytelling? No. This was a movie that was based on Nike commercials during the Super Bowl. Where Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny sold Nike shoes. So we have a gimmick. We make a movie that's based on a gimmick. Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny. There's advertising in it. But on a superficial level, I thought it was at least fun. I liked Michael Jordan. He wasn't a good actor even though he's playing himself. But at least he comes off, to me, likable. He comes off in the movie as a nice guy that you felt sorry for in the fact that he kind of doesn't know where he's at in life and he's trying to do this baseball thing and he's failing. So at least there's enough ego and let me reiterate that because I was going to say ego and the fact that you know of course you want to build up Michael Jordan in the opening credits like they do with LeBron James in this and you know, how Michael Jordan is so great. But it makes sense because part of the plot is to showcase, well, they want the best basketball player for this. But at the very least, unlike this new one, there are moments where that's lessened. The ego is put away a bit. Where Michael Jordan does showcase that he fails at baseball. That he's not sure what he wants to do. That people kind of kiss his ass about the baseball even though he's not really good at it at all. And he doesn't come off as a douchebag like LeBron James does. Now maybe these guys are douchebags in real life, but in the movie, Michael Jordan at least doesn't come off as a douchebag. He comes off as a guy that is easy to like. And just try to live his rich, greater rich, but you know, regular life. This... Not only does LeBron James in real life seem like a douchebag, his personality seems like a douchebag. In the movie, he seems like a fucking douchebag too. If you like LeBron James, that's cool. If he's not a douchebag in real life, okay. I'll give that's cool to know. In the movie, his character comes off, which is him playing himself, comes off as a douchebag. Like they try to do the movie Hook with Steven Spielberg where 
the guy doesn't get in touch with his kid, and then later on, the villain brings the kid to his side, and your father's a piece of shit, so come join me in fighting your father, and... <sighs> Let me backtrack a bit. So, Space Jam comes out, a lot of people don't like it, but I like it for its fun. It's, again, it's fun on a superficial level with, hey, I like some of the animation. Hey, they introduce a new character, Lola Bunny, that obviously was famous enough that she was in some of the Buzz Bunny, the Looney Tunes TV shows and other stuff. So, okay, they created a character that actually would live on in other pieces of avenue, media, revenue for... Studios, however you want to put it. And at least, you know, the music was good. I believe I could fly. Fly like an eagle. The theme song, Space Jam. At least you had good music. At least you had people like Bill Murray. That could, just with a few lines of dialogue. Get some chuckles and laughs out of you. And some fun. Not the case in this. And then on top of that. I never understood why you needed to make a sequel. I never understood it. Because you make a sequel. The people who like the original. They don't go well wait a minute. I've seen this gimmick already done. You're doing it again. And like I've already seen it. And I'm fond of it. Why you mess around with that. You know don't. They're not looking forward to it. People who hated it the first time. You didn't do it better. You didn't make it wittier. You didn't make it more creative. You just said, hey, Ready Player One was a movie. Let's make Ready Player Two. The Warner Brothers jerk-off session. And that's what it was. It was a Warner Brothers jerk-off fest. You remember Warner Brothers? Let's show every fucking Warner Brothers movie we could think of. Ready Player Two. And you put a hat on a hat. You put a gimmick on top of a gimmick. Not only do you have the gimmick of the basketball player with the Looney Tunes, but now you have the other gimmick of being like Ready Player One with Warner Brothers characters. So it's a gimmick on top of a gimmick on top of a gimmick. So you're... Whether you think it was a bad or a good movie or just fun, Space Jam was a gimmick that people were curious about because, okay, how's this going to work? Some people thought it sucked. Some people thought, okay, that was kind of charming and fun. We've already seen it now. Any magic of, hmm, that's so fucking weird. I wonder if it'll work. We've already seen that. So now that luster is lost. So again, making a new film doesn't make any fucking sense. Does he not going to have that same, hmm, I wonder how that will work. Not with all the characters. Does Ready Player One already beat you to it? Now with the subject of Space Jam already beat you to it. So. Also you have movies like the, the Lego movie. And other characters. You know they have. I think like the Lego Batman movie. Had Warner Brothers characters. You just put a gimmick on a gimmick. And instead you make it. Less funny. Less charming. Longer. The basketball game lasts for like a fucking hour. So. It, I get it. Space, but it feels so fucking long. You're just waiting it for it to end. LeBron James. Michael Jordan. I love Michael Jordan. Could he act? No. LeBron James can't either. And I think he's worse. Number one. Yes. I don't have any. Nostalgia whim for LeBron James. I haven't watched basketball in a long, long time. So that's why. One of the reasons why. Back then I did watch. And I liked Michael Jordan quite a bit. So, you know, that's my own... Personal taste. Maybe if it was Kobe Bryant, may you rest in peace. Maybe it'd be more, or, more interesting. As I'm stuttering. I just, the whole thing with Kobe Bryant, I still think about that and went, wow, that just fucking sucks. Just fucking sucks. Not only to him, but to his 
failing people in the helicopter. God damn it, man. But yeah, the... Or, after Space Jam, there was talks of yeah, maybe you did all these other different sports, like golf with Tiger Woods, or Steve Borden, Tony Hawk, or maybe you did Jackie Chan called Spy Jam. I'm like, no, the, we've already seen the damage. It's been done. The the magic, the lightning's not going to hit the bottle and capture it yet again. It's just not. Been there, done that. So the movie starts off with a young LeBron James who has a Looney Tunes book bag and this kid comes up and goes, oh, look what I got. I got a Dean boy and it happens to have a Looney Tunes video game in it. So the young LeBron James is playing and then the coach, the dad going, come on, we gotta go and win this game. The kid loses the game and then the dad going, man, these video games... They're, they're no good. Video games are bad. And the coach thinks. You lost because of these video games. You lost because you weren't focused. Like really. Year 2021. We're going the motif of. Technology video games they're bad. We, I, in 2021. With the day and age. Of technology. And the way the world is. And we have this fucking thing here. Called this. I'm sorry, this concept, if you're going to do this, you better do it in a much smarter or creative or interesting way. People go, wow, why? It's not like Space Jam's a classic. But yet again, if you're going to do another one, then you should look at the mistakes, fix those, stick with the stuff that works, do better. After over 10 years, like 96, 2006, 20 years... 25? Is it 25 years? Like, it was 96, 2006, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Fuck. You think after a few decades, maybe you'd do better instead you'd go 10 times worse. And I like Space Jam. Space Jam, I would give maybe like a 3... I don't know if I'd go 3.5, but maybe th at least 3 out of 5 stars at least. I have to think about it for a minute. But... This one, so Lau LeBron James, you know, he doesn't like video games. Video games are bad. And then, like the first film, goes through a montage, credits, only shit music. Definitely, this movie, I mean, even the music sucks. The music in the first Space Jam was at least good. Became one of the most popular soundtracks in its time, tons of people had the Space Jam soundtrack, myself included. A lot of good songs in that. Come on and jam if you want to slam. Fly like an eagle to the sea. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. What fucking songs are you going to remember from this fucking movie? Fuck if I know. So it's modern time. LeBron James is a fucking douchebag to his kid. His kid has this state-of-the-art sci-fi technology where he can scan shit with like his phone or something. And scanning something will get into this video game that he is making. And he's like 12 fucking years old. 12 fucking years old. He's making a game that looks like a glorified NBA jam. And he's able to have this technology that can scan shit. I mean, that alone. And LeBron James like, you need to play basketball. I'm like, LeBron, your kid's into basketball. Obviously, his first game he's making when he's 12 is a fucking basketball game. Not football, which that'd be funny just to piss off his dad. Fuck, I'm going to make a football game. I'm going to make a hockey game. <laughs> there you go, make a hockey game. Give Wayne Gre give the pro stars. There you go. Know. Remember pro stars? Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, and Bo Jackson. Because Bo knows Bo. Let's make a return of pro stars. If you don't remember, that was a cartoon where, yes, Wayne Gretzky, Bo, J Bo Jackson, and Michael Jordan were like superheroes. And 
God, I haven't seen that in forever. Pro Stars. I think it was called Pro Stars. I really watched that. I really watched a movie of Pro Stars. For two hours in the shit. <coughs> but LeBron James. His character being a douchebag. Oh but it's a character flaw. And he's going to work up to it. Because he realized that he should be a better father. Yeah that's cliche. It's typical. It's predictable. And all it does is just make your main character seem like a fucking asshole. Uh, and a fucking tool. In this day and age that. Video games and all this stuff are bad. Which is ironic because LeBron James is on every fucking NBA 2K20. If you think video games are bad, maybe you should give back all that money for all those NBA 2K20 games that you're in. <laughs> Which again, makes, it, makes it even more stupid of an idea. Video games are bad. How much you're paying me for NBA 2K Infinity? Thank you. But video games are bad. <laughs> what the fuck? Whatever, man. How about this? Instead. How about... Not deal with the video game stuff. I know the, the movie... It's the cyberspace. The Space Jam. Not space out, but cyberspace. Okay. But with the kid, maybe it's... It doesn't have to be about video games. It could be whatever where he's acting like an adult and he doesn't want to have fun. He's very strict. Not just with his kids, with anything where he doesn't, go, he doesn't want to have fun. He doesn't do this and that because he's focus, focus, focus. No more of that kid stuff. I don't want to... No more of that kid stuff. I grew up. I put away childish things. But then when he meets Bugs Bunny. And he's like wait a minute. I grew up with you guys when I was a kid. I you book bait. Uh, for a few seconds I played your video game. And it's him. Reigniting the child at heart. By seeing these characters that he grew up with as a kid. On cartoons, TV, whatever. And again reigniting with that childhood. And making the message that it's okay to be at li least a little bit child at heart, even at an older age. Where cartoons can get kids through the hard times. And maybe like, hey, something happened with my dad when I was a kid. Or you can't do it because it had to be with LeBron James, his real life. Even though it's not his kid who's playing his kid. And it's not his wife playing his wife. I think the wife is from Star Trek Discovery. That fucking piece of shit show. I could be wrong on that. Not on the show being a piece of shit. On the the actress, can't remember her name. But I mean, this feels like more of an ego project. Cause again, at least Michael Jordan. Hey, I was bad at baseball. LeBron, the douchebag. You can't go to E three. We got camp this week at basketball camp. Oh, you don't quit on me, son, huh? Come on, son. Can't be great without putting in work. The kid built a fucking video game and he's 12 fucking years old. I think he put in some work. Again, this... I know the original Space Jam is not fucking Larry Cohen or... I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, great writers. He's not... Alan Moore, he's not the guy who wrote God, what? I, my mind is just littered with the scripts of today that's frying my brain on the classes of yesteryear. I know he's not Arthur Conan fucking Doyle, but you know, the original movie, but it still had felt like it had more sense than this. God damn it, man. So you have the Warner Brothers server verse where Don Cheeto is Al G Rhythm, which is algorithm. Whoever wrote that should be fired. Oh, but this is directed by Malcolm D. Lee. 
You know, the Matrix of the film that said Pepe Le Pew was so awful, but then has a scene where the fucking cast of a Clockwork Orange is in it? Pepe Le, Pepe Le Pew. Shame on you. But here's a fucking scene where the, the one golden looking robot that could fuck with time. He's ready to dribble and over here, which probably the posters covered it, but uh, over here, like in the, in this section, like you can't. It's the Clockwork Orange people. So those guys that are rapists and murderers and such, they're that's fine. In your kids' movie, that's another thing. When people say, "Well, this is just a kids' movie, man," what's the big deal? It really is just a kids' movie. No, it's a family movie, also meant for adults. No, it's not. Really. Don Cheeto makes a Training Day reference. Team Con ain't got nothing on me. And the joke is, the actual Team Con just pissed about that. It makes references to The Matrix, Mad Max Fury Road. You know those kids films? Because you know Mad Max Fury Road was a kid film. You know those kid classes like Casa fucking Blanca? Yeah, to Casa Blanca. All the kids know Casa Blanca. Right? Casa Blanca, Casa Blanca, Casa Fucka, Casa Waka Waka Waka. Yeah, all the kids know Casa Blanca. Yeah, don't give me this, it's a kids film shit. It's like Sign of the Hedgehog, which I like that movie. But when that first shitty trailer and someone said, oh, why, why are you so upset? It's just a kids movie. No, it's trying to appeal to all audiences. No, it's that. Yeah, because all the kids, when the first trailer Sign of the Hedgehog came out, all the kids know what the fuck Gangsta's Paradise is. Sign of the Hedgehog, whose heyday was in the 90s, Jim Carrey, whose heyday was in the 90s, and Dace's, the song Taste's Paradise from the 90s. Yeah, the trailers were trying to appeal to people from the 90s. But thankfully, things changed, and that was a better movie. See, that's a family film. And based on a video game, speaking of video games, that worked. To Sign of the Hedgehog, if I don't mess this up, this film here, at least it was telling a story in a certain direction that didn't feel like it'd take too fucking long. Shorter than this movie, because this movie's almost two hours. And this actually tried to have a bit of genuine heart where the moment where Sonic he realizes how alone he is and how he's got no one to play this baseball game and he just gets so frustrated, he just pissed off and he has gotta let it loose. That's a nice little moment for a character. And then if Son of the Hedgehog rapping like Porky fucking Pig did in this. And it didn't say let's advertise every fucking video game from Sega every five minutes. Unlike this where Sarah Silverman plays the head of Warner Brothers. I'm like yeah right Sarah Silverman can't be the head of McDonald's let alone Warner Brothers but okay. Because Sarah Silverman, I don't, I don't like her. I don't think she's funny, and I think she's an idiot. To be perfectly honest, Sarah Silverman just comes off as a fucking d bag. She can eat a whole plate of dicks for all I care. I never liked Sarah Silverman. I like the movie Saving Silverman, but I don't like Sil whatever. And there's posters of Aquaman and Joker and her fucking. Uh, studio and algae rhythm Don Geo says the perfect launch for our new system is LeBron James and we're gonna put him in movies I'm like really LeBron's character is right this is a stupid idea of all the people in the world hmm, who don't put in movies in this high-tech technology oh LeBron James okay I like that when LeBron James and the kid go to the studio and you see like the Y shot of the studio. There's posters for Scoob. Like 
when I say posters, I bid on the building banners for Scoob. That was the new Scooby-Doo film. Came out like a year or two ago. One of the new Teen Titan movies. Tom and Jerry. And you know that brand new film, Matrix Revolutions. You know the film came out 2003? Which... I'm thinking, why the fuck? Like, again, brand new film, Scoob. Brand, you know, new film, Tom and Jerry. And then Matrix Revolutions from 2003. Oh, is this just to get people... Think the Matrix, think the Matrix, because we're going to have a new Matrix film that's probably going to fucking suck, because they're going to fuck it up. Like, And this is going to be a guy that liked the Matrix sequels. You know, yeah. I know, I know. I'm alone in that. But god damn it, man. Like, even that, like... You know, that new film, Matrix Revolutions. <laughs> so then they did LeBron James's meeting. And, oh, what you're putting in these movies? Batman versus LeBron. And you hear the Batman music from 89 Batman. What a waste to hear Danny Elfman's music in that. And then would you put you in Game of Thrones? You wouldn't put you in Harry Potter. And LeBron Chain LeBron even says, well, athletes with acting, it never goes well. You're right, exactly. Which is why you should not have done this movie in the first place. It's funny that you say that line, you know that line, it's there, but you don't take it to heart. And Malcolm Dealey directed it, cousin of Spike Lee. Who, what, directed Girls Trip? One of the barbershop movies? And Ryan Coogler was a producer. Ryan Coogler who did Creed and Black Panther. Congratulations. Congrats on making a shitty movie. Pretty much, he's, LeBron says something, Don Cheadle gets pissed, so he gets the kid and LeBron into the computer, and Le, Don Cheadle says, you know what, if you win, I'll let you go. If you lose, you're going to be here forever. I, and granted, I don't know why the fuck Don Cheadle wants LeBron. I guess he got that pissed off, LeBron James. I'm thinking, wouldn't, isn't your plan to make it that you you want to be... More well known. That's what Don Cheeto says. Oh, if I could get LeBron James to star in these movies, it would be a digital copy of him. I can be more recognized and well known. So how is that going to help you if you keep LeBron James there forever? That doesn't really help with your fucking plan that you wanted in the first place, Don Cheeto. But I guess he's just so pissed off LeBron, I need to make him suffer. You want to make him suffer? I don't know. Go back to the real world and take all his money. You're fucking computer AI. Find a way to take all his fucking money. I don't know. Be a ghost in the machine. I don't fucking know. <clears throat> so, it's just a way they set up we got to get another basketball team. Now, if you need to do another Space Jam sequel... How about this, Water Brothers? How about, okay, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, but also we could get, and let's say on the team, because some have to be switched out, uh, let's say 10, Let, let's say 10. So Bugs, Daffy, you have Lola Bunny there, but you can also have Scooby Doo, you have Yodi Bear, you have uh, Fred Flintstone, you can have George Jetson, like, you have these other characters in there, and that would at least make your gimmick a bit more interesting. Interesting to see how these characters play off each other. But no, we can't do that. Why? I don't fucking know why. You shouldn't make the movie in the first place, but I think that would be a bit more interesting. You'd have Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry meet Sylvester and Tweety. That'd be interesting. How would that work? Tom and Jerry means Sylvester and Tweety. Jerry and Tweety. 
have an understanding as well as Tom and Sylvester. So you have Tom chasing Tweety, Sylvester chasing Jerry. Like there's all these combinations. Yeah, I know they were doing films of their own, but they also did Scooby. But you got Scooby Doo reference. I mean, if you don't do that with this Ready Player One shit, there's opportunities you could have had and you missed it. You didn't do it. No, instead, LeBron James falls into Looney Tune World, and when he hits the ground, it causes a Nike swoosh. After the crash, a Nike swoosh is the outline of the crash into the ground. But this movie did. And it should be fucking buried. So he meets Bud Bunny, who's there by himself, because everybody else left. So... Get into a spaceship and pretty much let's go to whatever DC property we want to think. I mean, whatever Warner Bros. property property we could think of. So uh, we go to DC World, where Daffy Duck and Porky Pig are going to crash a train. Well, not really crash it. They set it up so Daffy can save it, so he could be a superhero. But it fucks up, and Superman saves it, and we. Got Superman theme which I think it's a, the version from Superman Returns and this is the Justice League and then you have what's next I'm trying to think what was next Roadrunner and Wildy e. Coyote and Mad Max Fear Road I'm like, do fucking kids know Mad Max Fear Road? And isn't it a bit weird that Roadrunner and Wild E. Coyote is in the midst of a scene where people are dying? In the movie Mad Max Fear Road, when these cars are being blown up, people are dying in those scenes. Not in real life, but it, within the context of the universe of that movie, people are fucking dying. But then Roadrunner and Wild E. Oh, beep, 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 beep. Oh well, those people died. Beep beep. <sighs> Elmer Fudd and Sylvester the Cat is in Austin Powers. Does Elmer Fudd is Mini Me? Which I don't even remember Elmer Fudd really doing much of anything else for the rest of the fucking film. Now that I think about it. I mean, you didn't even need Elmer Fudd back. He didn't really do much of shit. I can't think of one moment with Elmer Fudd. During the basketball scene. Or anything. Same with Yosemite Sam. They get to Yosemite Sam. From Casablanca. Because again, all the kids know Casablanca. They get Granny from The Matrix. When The Matrix came out, there was 85 fucking movies that parodied the Matrix from Scary Movie, uh, Charles Angels did a bit of it, maybe not outright parody, but a lot of movies were inspired by it, as well as doing parodies, Scary Movie did the parody, Shrek did the parody, a lot of fucking movies did the parody, or they were ripped it off, or they were inspired by it, like Bulletproof Month, Charlie's Angels, other stuff. Same with Bullet Time, like, and you're making more of those references now. So it's Granny pretty much doing the scene that Trinity did at the beginning of The Matrix. The one smirk I got out of it is Speedy Gonzales was in that scene. And he's dodging bullets going, Arriba, Arriba. And then, oh, my sombrero. Because <laughs> a boy went through it. Oh, just the idea of just Speedy being sad that his sombrero, sombrero got shot. They're almost like that's the only time I smirked. Oh no, he lost his sombrero. I'm surprised he got Speedy and Gonzalez in there. But I know uh, Gabriel Iglesias, I think, did the voice. And he said, well, there's a lot of people that actually do like this character. And we had heard that they got rid of the character and we were very upset. Lo and behold, his people know. You know, it's just a fucking joke. It's not anything to get mad about. Yeah, 
Lola Bunny is in Wonder Woman world, and she lost her tits. I guess when you go to Wonder Woman world, you lose your tits, because Lola Bunny lost her tits. So much for the fapping. I mean, it just... Whether she's got tits or not, whatever the fuck, it's cartoon character. It's the whole fucking thing that the filmmakers brought it up. As to, look what we did. Aren't we on your breast? D. It's like, shut the fuck up. How about you worry about your goddamn movie? Look how special we are. Look how, look how great we are. Oh shit, don't stand for crap. We don't do nothing. We don't do this. We don't do anything. Look how great we are. We're, Lola Bunny is so much more sophisticated. We got rid of Pepe Le Pew. Yeah, you also got rid of anything good within your fucking movie. Jokes were gone too. Decent music was gone too. Again, at least the first film, at least had fucking Bill Murray come in and get some chuckles a couple scenes. At least you had actual basketball legends like Charles Barkley and Larry Bird and as well as Jordan. Patrick Ewing. Most of these other basketball players I didn't fucking recognize. At times it was cheap as well. There's two. You know the bad guys in the first Space Jam? The Monstars? They're in two shots. They're two shots stolen from the first movie. Like, you looked at the the Monstars, the, I did the little alien creatures. There, I did two scenes they react, they are ripped off of the first movie. The same animations. It's just they changed the background. Wow. How fucking cheap can you get, man? The kid who plays LeBron James' son, he's boring as fuck to watch. Don Cheeto... Is making a fool out of himself. And I like Don Cheeto, man. I like Don Cheeto. Ever since I first saw him in Hamburger Hill. I liked him in Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. I've liked him in a lot of movies. Not here. I, I would say of the humans. He's given the best performance. Because he actually is trying. So maybe it's not Don Cheeto's fault. It's just a shitty script. He can't save it. So I would say it's not really Don Cheadle's acting. It's just what the fuck's he going to do with this movie? I think he's trying, but he can't make this shit. It's like a fucking boulder. It's going to go downhill no matter what. You can't stop it. You don't get crushed along the way. So then they prepare for the game. Buzz Bunny makes an MC Hammer reference. Because again, for people who say it's just a kid's movie. All the kids know MC Hammer. Yeah, they all remember MC fucking Hammer. A lot of adults don't remember MC Hammer. <laughs> so the game starts. And again, the game goes on for like an hour. Of, maybe not. Like at least 40, 45 minutes of the movie at least. It's pretty fucking long. And I can see why in the first Space Jam it was a bit shorter. Just when it keeps going and going it just... I've seen basketball movies that have less... The games are shorter than this. It just would not end. And it just reminds you of the first movie where the Looney Tunes do their crazy stuff to get the basket, the ball in the basket. Only this is a video game, so it's not even actual basketball. It's NBA, NBA Jam style, like you get baskets and based on style, you get like 20, 30, 50, 100 points based on style. So, you could barely even call it a basketball game. A part of me is like, well, why the fuck do you even have goddamn LeBron James in there in the first place? At least the first film, you still had a guy, Michael Jordan, that could shoot the hoop, play ball, and there was a 
more of a reason for him to be there to be able to play basketball because you need someone to play basketball because the actual game playing is fucking basketball. Exaggerated basketball, of course, but here is... Uh, whatever, fuck. And just the the Warner Brothers advertisements, just in the game, all of the crowd is multiple, multiple amounts of, hey, there's the Gremlins. If you look really closely, there's the Animaniacs. There's Pennywise, It, from the, the new It films. Disney and all the kids, they love Pennywise. Uh, there's the Penguin and Catwoman, and there's Batman and Robin. There's Mr. Freeze, the Arnold version of Mr. Freeze, kind of, sort of. There's yeah, the group from A Clockwork Orange. There's Teen Con. There's the Iron Giant, which was in Ready Player One. There's just all this other shit in the background, and it makes it irritating. Because your eye teeth didn't caught what the fuck is that? What the fuck? What the fuck? So you're not even looking at the game. You're not even looking at the characters. You're not trying to pay attention to the dialogue. Because your eye is going to this and this and this. That's not a good thing. It's one thing. Maybe you put like one or two things there. Maybe you watch this. Like oh, there's an Easter egg. Okay. This is like every fucking shot. It's supposed to be a recognizable. Oh, there's the Scooby-Doo van and the Scooby-Doo game. And at times, the costumes that these people wear is h horrible cosplay. Cheap cosplay that make me puke. And as they're ready to, to play the game, the kid is with Don Cheadle's character, and LeBron James... If he was fucking smart, he could explain it. Hey, kid. Hey, son. Uh, I know we've had our you know, difficulties, but he wants to... Because Don Cheeto, if they lose, LeBron is going to stay there forever. And then Don Cheeto was able to bring a lot of the fans of LeBron James there. And the rest of the family. And they'll stay there forever. And the Looney Tunes will be defeated. Uh, deleted. If they're defeated, they'll be deleted. You can tell the kid, by the way, if uh, this guy, if we lose, this guy's going to kill the Looney Tunes characters. Oh, you don't believe me? Hey, Bugs. Hey, Daffy. My kid doesn't believe me. Am I telling the truth that this guy said you'd be deleted? Yeah, he did. You could say that, but, you know, we wouldn't have a movie. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake, man. So, of course, they're losing. And the, the bad guys is not aliens. It's... The stands of basketball players that the kid used for his game. But I guess because of some nicknames, they turn into like ones made of water. One's like a bird. One's like a snake. I think one's a fire or something. Whatever. One's like a golden one that can fuck with time. And of course they're losing. It's halftime. What are we going to do? Oh, I got Michael Jordan, but oh, it's Michael B. Jordan. Because Michael B. Jordan, he probably did as a favor to Ryan Coogler, who's producing it, because they worked together in Creed. I don't want to see Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan is an actor that when I saw Chronicle, I liked. But the more I've seen him, the less talent I've seen in him. Either he didn't get the right roles, he didn't get the right scripts, or it's him, I don't know. And then the fact that you, for fans, you tease them with the appearance of Michael Jordan. You don't get that. I think that would actually be pretty cool. That could be pretty damn heartfelt. Michael Jordan going, listen, I'm too old to play. But, listen. I played with these guys before. 
I know they can help you out. I know things are going to be great. Bill Murray or like the Larry Bird, like Larry Bird, Hello Cameo. There's a lot of stuff you could have done with the actual Michael Jordan. And okay, that would have been a nice tip to the fans. Oh, that's cool to see him again with Bugs Bunny and maybe he has a few words with them. No. You make a shit joke. Michael B. Jordan. And then they go off to the second half and they start winning. That's when Porky Pig, as the notorious P.I.G., does his fucking rap song. I feel like I want to just die. No matter what people say badly about the first film, it didn't have Porky Pig doing a fucking rap battle. While at times the other Looney Tunes are dressed as if they're in a fucking... <sighs> Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff music video. Get the fuck out of here. Just fucking worn out by this shit. God. Fucking Porky Pig. Porky. I'm I'm settled again. I just had to lose it. I had to lose it. I lost it. <laughs> it was sad. This is not even the worst film I've seen this year. That's how bad this fucking year has been, man. It really hasn't. Okay, is it? <sighs> Wally Coyote did the multiplier thing. Well, Wildy Coyote's like the fucking hero of the movie, despite them not maintaining it, because they're down by like a thousand points, and Wildy Coyote makes a thousand points by this multiplier. So again, Wildy Coyote, he's the real hero of the movie. That's what people should be saying. Wildy Coyote is the hero of the fucking film, and the movie's too stupid enough to realize that. Like, wow, he helped get us... A thousand fucking points. And we're a thousand down. Just the movie's too fucking stupid. They don't give a fuck about that. Like the fact that. At the end of the fucking game. The tunes. The Looney Tunes. If you guys lose. Will be deleted. Dead. These innocent people will be trapped here forever, forever. And LeBron James has to stop the game to be in the middle to talk to his son and go, Listen, son, and throws the basketball. I love you, man. You're special. I love you, son. I'm like, dude... I get that you love your son, but at the same time, this is not the fucking time for it. Because you like throwing the ball away when you need to get the basket as soon as you can, as much as you can, because the Looney Tunes will fucking die. These people will be fucking trapped. To stop in the middle of the door, I love you, you're special. That's the least of the fucking worries you should be having of anybody. 
If I was in the crowd, I'd be like, shut the fuck up and win the game. I don't want to be here forever. I don't want Buzz Bunny Daffy Duck to fucking die and be deleted. Because you need to stop to have a fucking lifetime Hallmark moment. I love you, special. Shut the fuck up, LeBron, and play. Fucking shit. So, apparently there's this glitch that was in the game. We're going to do this glitch here so that Don Cheeto at times can just do whatever the fuck he wants. Which I'm like, he does a... The good guys hit a basket... Don Cheeto takes the basketball out. And I'm like, wait a minute. That score went back two points. Don Cheeto will cheat. Why the fuck does he cheat? And be like, you know what? Let me take back all your baskets and you're back to square one. Oh, wow. You're a thousand points down. Why doesn't Don Cheeto do that? Why does he do that? I don't know why he doesn't do that. He, he can cheat. He's able to cheat. He takes one basket away. Why doesn't he do this da -da 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 and take all the baskets away? Tizzer made the whole basketball game pointless. Exactly. When you bring this up, then you think, well, wait a minute. Don Chio can fucking do anything. He's got the ultimate god cheat code now. This is my game. He could do that right then and there. Du -du 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 -du. Sorry. You have no more points anymore. I just think I magically lost. Did he did the one? Why does he do it all? But again, there would be no fucking movie. Of a movie that had what? Six fucking people? Help write the goddamn thing? It was something crazy like that. Let me see if I can get the phone. Get a signal, sorry. Get a fucking signal for this. I'll wait on that. But yeah. It... So LeBron James is going to do it. But Buzz Bunny gets it. He does the move. He's glitching out. They win the game. Buzz Bunny seems like he's going to die. LeBron James and the kid. Barely show any fucking emotion on it. They don't even think about it after. Instead, it's like, hey, my son, you think you went going to the basketball camp? No, I took you to E3. All right. I'm like, uh, guys, as far as you guys know, Bud's money fucking died to save your sorry ass. And you're not fucking doing anything much about it. What the fuck? Well, you guys don't give a fuck, do you? Space Jam New Legacy Space Jam A New Legacy is a 2021 movie directed I, I don't give a fuck about that I did this so I didn't have to type the shit Google user 71% like the movie Really? Is that why I guess a 4.49 to be 26% Rotten Tomatoes Why it costs 150 million dollars For some fucking reason while wow, the first film crossed half of that. And I think it made like 150 million worldwide. So yeah. You keep telling yourself that. Fucking shit. Okay, where's the Wikipedia? There you go. Sorry. But Bugs Bunny didn't die. He was in. He went to the real world. Cause I'm a Looney Tune. We can't die. And then I guess the other terrors went to the real world, and now they're hanging out with LeBron James in the real world. And there you go. That's just the way it is. Yeah, okay. Six people. Four people came out with the story. Six people. 
six people on the fucking screenplay. And so you think I'm not fucking lying. I don't know if you can see this. Space Jam New Legacy. Look how many fucking people! Six people! Four with the story by. Six screenplay. Jewel Taylor, Tony Redmeyer, Teenan Kugler, Terrence Nance, Jesse Gordon, Celeste Ballard. Story by Jewel Taylor, Tony Redmeyer, Teenan Kugler, Terrence Nance. Six fucking people. Six goddamn people came up with the fucking story for this. Jesus Christ. I mean, the first film had four, and that's a lot. This had six? Two more fucking writers? Made a film fucking way worse. And again, I like the original Space Jam. Superficial, but fun. God damn, this is a Warner Brothers jerk-off fest. Talk about if a studio masturbated, that's what Space Jam New Legacy is. It's a goddamn studio masturbating. That's literally what it is. Get the fuck out of here. So, I mean, what more can I say about this film? The acting, yeah, it sucks. LeBron James, like Michael Jordan can't act, but LeBron James was worse. And again, the way the character they're doing it made him seem like a fucking dickhead, douchebag. This, because the character needs somewhere to go. But there's better ways to do it to make not him... He becomes just unlikable. That I don't want to fucking look at him. I don't want to hear his fucking voice. Just becomes unlikable. The other... The Looney Tunes, the, the look of them. The 2D, when they're... Well, it's all CG, but 2D. Looked fine. When they went to 3D, like, Bud's Buddy's face looked a bit frumpy. I don't know what it was. The... Fuck, how the hell do I put it? I can't remember what the shit... I forget what the fuck I was going to say. Oh, the CG. The... I've seen worse. I mean, to be fair, I've seen worse, but it's just... I've seen better, too. I've seen better. But, I mean... Honestly, that was the least of this movie's worries for me. It really was the look of the film. Was the least of this film's worries. I, I mean, it's the least thing I would complain about. Honestly. It's the other shit I complain about. Not giving shit about the cast. The Looney Tunes... Yeah, it's always nice to see the Looney Tunes because they don't, movie-wise, you just don't see them a lot because it's not like they make a lot of Looney Tunes movies. Looney Tunes back in action, which I would rather watch than this. That didn't do well. I always wondered, like, why not do, like, a cross-promotion? I always thought, okay, if you want to do a movie, t do you even know the planes, trains, and automobiles? Do, like, Bud Bunny and... Mickey Mouse. They gotta go on a road trip or but you play off like planes, trains, and automobiles. Or I guess here you'd be Bugs Buddy and Daffy Duck. Play them off you know, use planes, trains, and automobiles as a template. Or just like there's so many other stories, other stuff you could do. Like you finally are gonna do Looney Tunes on the bid screen again. Well, bid screen. Well it was in theater, so to be fair. And no, let's do Space Jam the Legacy. Like, we already did the gimmick. People don't know what the gimmick looks like. People don't know what the gimmick feels like. You gotta go through that again. Some people didn't like the first film. They're like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And then the people who like you go, well, I just go watch that because I get more nostalgia value. I'd get a better soundtrack. Uh, for some people like me, I like Michael Jordan more than LeBron James. And... 
I just don't see what there is. I, I guess if you're a diehard LeBron James fan, this movie's for you. If you want to see 85 Warner Brothers, you want to see them keep referencing you know, Clockwork Orange and The Matrix and Mammoth Fury Road, and all those kids films for the kids movie, uh, you go ahead. You want to see a lot of shit cosplay costumes in the background and whoring out all the Warner Bros. characters. Make sure you see all of us on H you know, HBO Max. You know, the, the same HBO Max that had the Looney Tunes cartoon where Elmer Fudd could not use a fucking gun anymore. So they gave him a fucking Grim Reaper scythe. Because, you know, a gun is bad, but a thing that could cut your fucking head off, that's A-OK. -okay. And even my fucking webcam is literally hating this movie. The longer I talk, the longer my webcam is dying. Like, my webcam is literally going, fuck this. Holy shit. My webcam just... My webcam literally just said, fuck! So, uh, you might have missed some of what I said. My webcam literally just said, you need to stop talking about this movie, or I will fuck your video up. So, I guess I'll stop. Because otherwise, my webcam will revolt on me, uh, go on strike... Perhaps strike me in the face. Whatever the hell is going to do it. Maybe the webcam is going to jump out of me. And I'll end like a found footage movie. I don't know. So Space Jam New Legacy. New fuck to see. New legacy of shit. Well this is my legacy of rage. Fuck Space Jam New Legacy. Uh, Malcolm D. Lee. I don't think you have much talent. The Six Riders. It took six writers to write this? Holy shit. No wonder Hollywood sucks. No wonder. At, at least put some decent fucking music. At least get some fucking... Cameos worth of shit than Michael B. Jordan. Get the actual Michael Jordan. Get Bill Murray. Get someone funny. Surprised they didn't have Kevin Hart in this. There's a Kevin Hart joke. I'm as short as Kevin Hart. Sadly, Kevin Hart has made better movies than you. Space Jam New Legacy. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.